Pool. What, what did I get? Bumper Pool. Oh, Bumper Pool. That's the dude's name. The Bumper guy's pool? name is Bumper Pool. Is that not the greatest name ever? I've heard some. There's a guy called the coldest to ever do it, Johnson. The place for Florida State. <laughs> <laughs> I that's almost the name. coldest is no name is to ever do it, Johnson. <laughs> that's a good, good yeah, name. That's, 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 that's a, a great good name. They, there's some. There's some names. My kids have those names too. Like they make those names up. Yeah. Where like his first name is Jack, and then the rest of it is something else. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah, I don't know if we can say that on the radio. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> it, but, but they get me all the time. Think of it this way: if you can't say it during your Buccaneer broadcast, you can't say it. Now. Well, listen, it, uh, my Buccaneer broadcast is in Spanish. Yeah. The oh. guy that owns the radio station does not speak Spanish. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, you get away with it. I got away. Well, I'm a fan first, broadcaster second. Yeah. So there's been a couple times that I slipped up in my uh, the play-by-play, -play, like his eyes open because he's a professional. He's done it his whole life, and he looks at me like, you know what you just said, and I don't even know that I said it. Yeah. So then I get a text from my wife, Santiago, <laughs> that they're listening. What? So when Mike Evans two years ago when he sprained his knee, mm -hmm. go, right going into the playoffs, right. I may have slipped up a bad word <laughs> on accident, but it was just like, yeah, that was our right. season. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Actually, it was a Super Bowl year. Then he came back and played. So. Yeah, so sometimes I've I've slipped up. The, so the good thing is, um, nobody the, understands. The owner doesn't understand. Right, right. Uh, I think that was the hardest thing for me getting into the media was like I, I can't cheer. You know, like I oh. I, I wanted to be at the UFC fight cage. I'm like yeah, like, and I'm elbowing. Right, like, what are you doing? You have to be impartial. You have to be biased. You can't have favoritism. You can't show right. you're one or the other. So people ask me like, oh, what do you think of the game? I'm like, eh. yeah. <laughs> I just documented it. I don't know. I, I didn't really have any emotion towards it. How has how has it been? What's it like? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. Out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's been awesome. So when I met, this is almost the same story as Andrew. I didn't want to say no and then regret it. So with Bucks Radio, it was the same thing. We met and and I've been asked. So they've been talking about it for like ten years. So uh, T J Reeves calls me pretty much uh, was calling me about every day. Hey, we're thinking about doing Spanish radio. Would you be interested? Yes, T J. Never heard back. And so then, so he calls me five years now. This will be our fifth year. Hey, you interested in doing Spanish radio? Yes, TJ, but I'm not. I won't hear anything. Within like 30 minutes, I get a call from the guy who owns the radio stations. We meet at the Hard Rock, and I said, "Look, I have my soccer schedule laid out, so I'm going to miss this, this, and that game. So my youth soccer was priority. Yeah. I said I can't miss my kids' game. If you're okay with that, I said, no, that's fine. At the time, we had uh, there were three of us. Um, so. And then after that, man, I fell in love with it. I was like, I, I, I don't want to miss. So I schedule everything around football now or the Bucks games. And now the best part about it, Santiago's going to be our sideline reporter. Right. So he'll be, uh, and I told him, just stand next to TJ and translate whatever he says, and you'll be fine. Because <laughs> <laughs> TJ's like the, uh, the the Buccaneer Bible. I mean, he knows everything about the Bucks, all the history. So, uh, so I said, yeah. So I, it's, been, it's been fun. And to cover my team at Raymond James winning a Super Bowl after we won it, you know, in 2002, it's like, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I had this thing with, you probably don't know who Kenny Florian is, uh, MMA fighter, and, and he would always give me a hard time because I don't like to pick fights. And it's because, you know, I know the fighters, you know, and you don't want to, well, you picked against me. Oh, I didn't mean you were being fights because you get beat up. I thought you were talking about that. <laughs> like, I don't like to pick fights. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't like I, I don't like to pick fights either. But then Kenny Florian became a media guy, and he's like, I now understand. Have you had any of those situations where, you know, it might be a negative thing and, and you know, you don't want to upset somebody? Well, I work, I work for the Bucks, so I'm, and I always said. Uh, but you can still be, say something negative. No, no, I, but I always said I always, I'm always going to pick the Bucks to win because I could never not pick the Bucks. So anytime we do picks, uh, I got to pick the Bucks. But as far as players, you have to, you know, the, the, yeah. the audience has to hear you speak the truth. So when there's a mistake, we got to bring it up. But it's never malicious. Yep. Sometimes when media people, I guess uh, people, members, hadn't, that haven't played sports, right. they don't know how to maneuver it where it's not malicious. Yep. And I had trouble with some of the media that destroyed me towards the la latter part of my career that never had the guts to go in the locker room and interview me. Right. Mm -hmm. I've so, talked about that just so you know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we talk about that We talk lot. about it all the time. You know, I, I, I hated a, a particular magazine, a guy would, and, and it was Jorge Diaz. And he would, they you would like say, Jorge? no, I love Jorge. No, I, I, you know Jorge <laughs> and I are, yeah, I mean, we're extreme. I met Jorge because of Warren. Um, but this particular magazine would rip them, rip him in the magazine, and then sit down next to him like they're best friends. Right. And Jorge would never say anything because he's too nice a guy. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Why are you talking to this person? 
So, yeah, I mean, I definitely get it. I can understand them pointing out mistakes. Mistakes is fine. Right, but not being when, ugly. when it's malicious and ugly, and then you don't even know me. You Sorry. don't even know what I'm going through. Because if we have a relationship and, you know, I don't know, you're having issues at home, or you, now you know, okay, this is why. And if you're friends with that media person, they're not going to say why, but they're not going to destroy you as much. Yep. But then somebody that doesn't even... But I, I was bothered more by the guys that didn't even have the guts to face you one on one because you can say whatever you want, but then come ask me questions, yeah. and then I'll answer the questions. Mm-hmm. But those guys were hiding, and then man, they were just a, they were the worst. They were just uh, I agree. So they didn't care. They would just destroy everybody. I agree. So along so along that mindset, along that like framework, this should of, be okay. okay. No, I'm gonna be, be professional. I'm learning on the job. So so the mind state of a, of a skilled position of a kicker where the strategy is to ice the kicker and, and, you know, but you also have to put in like what's going on in their personal life at home and the, and things in their life. So my question is why don't the kickers get as much respect as they deserve? Because how many games come down to the final kick? I mean, it comes down to you. It's your position that usually wins or loses a game, especially in the playoffs when the scores are so tight. Because we're not as big and tough as these guys, you know? <laughs> so, no, I think that, that I think it's changed a little bit now. Kickers back in the day, prior to Mark Royals, I won't bash our boy Mark Royals. <laughs> I will. Uh, those guys used to do their kick and go play golf. No, that so, was Mark. No, that was Mark. <laughs> I, I, uh, on the record, I don't golf. I, I hate golf. So I only do two or three golf tournaments a year, which is you know Mike Allstop, Brooks, and maybe a couple. That's it, charity, and and it's usually somebody else's ball that we're playing off because mine never. So so, but um, so they. They never integrated themselves on in the team, you know, and and, and our practice is so different. While the, the rest of our team is heading and 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 competing for two three hours, we're on the side doing our and and we have to we can't kick for three hours. Mm-hmm. So you have to figure out a way to like pass the time invent without games. <clears throat> right, you invent games, but you try to figure out the time without leaving, you know. But a lot of times, prior to that that older generation, they was, used to leave. Now. The, the kickers are usually the kickers and punters were usually former soccer players. Mm-hmm. So you want to be around your teammates. You want to be there and hanging out. So for me, it was fun to hang out. And once I was done kicking, that was the best part of the practice because now I could start talking to guys and you can start making fun of guys or jokes, and it goes by so so fast. But I think that's why you know they just and it's it's a totally different position too. It's kind of I would say like the goalie yeah. in soccer. You're like a specialist. You know, it's a right. It's a, it's a, I'll talk from like our perspective, you know, looking in. It's definitely weird when you're in meetings for 10 hours and you come in, the kickers are talking about stocks and bonds and stuff like that. If it happens. <laughs> I wasn't but, that smart, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we see a lot of that. But what happens is we know how important kickers are because, you know, from my time in the Bucks, we lost a lot of games, close games, due to having kicker issues for random different reasons. You know, but like guys, what they see is, man, like, you have one job to do. As important as it is, it's like, you know, like we were doing this for all this time and you come in and it's like, man, we need this kid. But guys understand it's a hard thing to do. Guys know that like we could never do that. There's no, none of those other guys that kick a field goal to win a game, not even an extra point. You know, so I think guys know how important it is. It's just like that the frustration of losing. But it's like anything else. If a quarterback goes a pick at the end of the game to win a game, guys get pissed. And not that they're pissed at the person, they're pissed at like situation. what transpired in the situation. Because everybody makes mistakes. See. For me, what I did, I would spend the whole off-season training with the team. Yeah. I would do the whole off-season because that way, if something went wrong, mm-hmm. which I had a, a, a missed kick that cost us in, uh, in Green Bay, nobody ever pointed fingers because they know it's not because of lack of work. Yeah. You know, and, but now if you're the kicker that kicks and goes home to play video games or goes play golf, yeah. then that could be a little different where they could look at you look like, at ah, stay out and kick a little more instead of golfing. Mm-hmm. But if you're just there with your team and working, at the end of the day, everybody's human everybody's going to miss yeah uh so for me that was my 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 way of saying look i love being with this team and i'm doing my best but sometimes it doesn't work out yeah. if you knew how many times i heard your name in the press box <laughs> before ryan suck up got here <laughs> every game where's martin call martin <laughs> martin's down the street get martin up here well, still well, at your when age. you were hearing that i was getting the text so i, I stopped hearing <laughs> i stopped getting the text when suck when we signed suck, suck up, up yeah. so yeah so it was good that's a good thing uh no i at that time my answer was like, i wish but i only have one kick left then my leg would fall off but <laughs> were, were you superstitious did you have like certain things you did or didn't do day oh, day? Yeah. very yeah very yeah so there was like i would polish my cleats because mine were like genuine leather cleats so I would polish them on Friday so my cleats had to look like spotless you know like that's the old school copas you know from back in the day yeah. not, not the purple stuff they wear now like the synthetic <laughs> mine were like so I had to polish my cleats 
and I had basically five pairs. So I had five kicking, and then the plant food was the longer stud, so I made sure they were all perfect, and I carried those with me. I never, I never let the equipment guys touch them. So I was gonna say nobody was ever allowed to touch. Really? Them. No, no. I said that's my, that's my thing. Well, wow. you know, Darren needed a pair of cleats wow. as a backup. Every, everybody gave the equipment guy a backup pair just in case they ripped or whatever. And I said, man, I don't, I don't have any. So finally, I just gave him a, just a regular pair of cleats. I said, just put those on my, in my bin. Don't worry about it. I have my five pair coming every game. Yeah. So that was my thing. And then I, then I had like a little prayer card that I did. I wore my, my chain, you know, with a cross. Everything was like, and then I crossed myself. I'm, I grew up Catholic, so a uh, hundred times before every kick, even like God cares about what, how this game's going to end. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, every, you, you, once you, one thing started to work out, uh, well, one of the biggest thing was like the, my worst roommate, thanks to Mark, cause not worse cause he's a bad guy, but he liked to stay up late, mm -hmm. talk to his girlfriend, bring uh, girls and offer me sloppy seconds, you know, like, <laughs> like, I'm trying to sleep, man. We got a yeah. game today because he was on the practice squad, not practice squad, but he, had, he wasn't dressing. Yeah. Didn't act up yet. But that's the year I went to the Pro Bowl. So I was like, I don't want to mess with this. So I'll deal with it. Plus, I'm not going to call him out to the coaches. Yeah. So little things like that. Once I was on the road, I was like, I'll deal with him. And, and, and so as athletes, we all, I think we all have superstitions. Yeah. Routine is huge. There was a, there was a game we played um, Carolina my second year and I'm blocking Julius Peppers of all people and uh, we get there and for whatever reason our schedule gets messed up I get to the game and I have like 60 minutes to get ready but I get to the game like three hours before and I have a long process of tubbing stretching massage chiropractor and I didn't do my full process and I didn't feel right up until mm -hmm. like the second quarter like my body was just kind of unresponsive so it's one of those things where if you don't get into your team it's almost mental that when I do these things I feel ready to play and so you just kind of have to go through your routine and get it done. Do you miss playing? Oh, absolutely. I miss uh, I miss the locker room more than anything. Just hanging yeah. out with the guys. That the 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 day to days. I mean, working out every day. I mean, that I didn't miss that. I, you know, I didn't like the weight room as it is. But, but uh, no. But the, just the team. You know, being around the team. That that you. I think I think you you'll miss it forever. So coaching now. You're you're you know working on people's future. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, something else that you're involved in, and that's saving some lives. And, and we're going to talk about that when we return. This is Knockout Radio, brought to you by 8 Man Strong and Staff Center. We'll be right back.